Hospice Care and Palliative Care Services, along with Women Swimming, welcomes you to Swimming with Icebergs. My name is Jen Gabriel, and I'm the Director of Development and Community Relations at Hospice Care. Thank you for joining us this evening. Hospice Care and Palliative Care Services uses an interdisciplinary team approach to provide medical, emotional, and spiritual care to patients, families, and caregivers in Cortland and Tompkins counties. We offer three primary services. Our palliative care program relieves the symptoms and stress of serious illness, and it can be provided at the same time as curative treatment. Our hospice team provides support and comfort in the last six months of life, so you can more fully enjoy time with loved ones. And finally, our grief support program offers support groups, workshops, community memorials, and private counseling sessions to anyone in our service area who is grieving the death of a loved one. It is never too early to contact us and ask questions. For the past 17 years, Women Swimming for Hospice Care has brought together hundreds of swimming women, boaters, volunteers, and spectators for a 1.2 mile community swim in Cuga Lake. In total, this event has raised more than $5 million to support local patients and families. Last year, we took our swim virtual and anyone and everyone was able to participate. Participants who went the distance for hospice care chose any goal they wished to accomplish and worked through the summer to achieve it. Despite the change in format, our community's passion for hospice care shined bright, allowing us to raise more than $425,000. Thank you. This year, we are again opening up the event to all ages, all genders, all activities, and all locations. We hope you'll join us from May 3rd until August 14th in setting any goal you choose to achieve. And on August 14th, our swim and women will be back in the water with a modified and socially distanced swim. Please keep an eye on our social media and womenswomen.org for more details. Now, without further ado, I'd like to introduce our guest speaker tonight, Jamie Monahan. Jamie is an ice, winter, and ultra marathon swimmer from New York City who has enjoyed open water swimming on all seven continents. She has successfully completed nonstop solo ultra marathon endurance swims up to 114 miles in distance and more than 45 hours in duration. Jamie is an inductee of both the International Marathon Swimming Hall of Fame and the Ice Swimming Hall of Fame. Jamie is a Cornell alum, and we are so excited to welcome her back to Ithaca for this exciting event, a collaboration between Women Swimmen for Hospice Care, the Tompkins County Public Library, Cuga Medical Center, and Guthrie. Welcome, Jamie. We're thrilled that you are here. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Jennifer, and thanks to Hospice Care uh, for having me tonight. Uh, Tompkins County uh, Library as well is a favorite of mine. I spent a lot of time in their branch uh, during graduate school, so amazing organizations, and I'm very happy to be speaking with everyone tonight. So, um, so uh, like Jennifer said, my name's Jamie Monahan. I'm an ice, winter, and marathon swimmer. And the title of this presentation is Swimming with Icebergs. But that being said, I'm going to talk about my whole journey from newbie cold water swimmer to my winter swimming, progressing in distance, and then kind of pursuing some really audacious challenges around the world. Um, you may not want to swim with icebergs. You may not want to do such extreme things, but I hope that, you know, the things that I share this evening will be helpful to you in some way and pursuing your own personal challenges as well. So, yeah, I'm from New York City and um, kind of did all the normal things up until about my late 20s. Uh, swam all growing up, went to university, swam there. When I got out of college, I actually ended up working on Wall Street for about 10 years and the hours were really demanding. So I didn't do much swimming then, but gradually I got back into running, then did triathlons and then started open water swimming. And again, started with a 1.5 mile swim during a triathlon and then built up to two miles, 10 miles, 12 miles, and then tackled the English channel. So my one of my big recommendations is that whatever you're looking to do, build up gradually just so you can get comfortable with it and, you know, feel good while you pursue your goals. Don't jump in to, to cold water uh, feet first uh, to use a mixed metaphor. Um, but yeah, in terms of my winter swimming journey, um, 
after completing the English Channel and a bunch of different other challenges, I was looking for something new to do. Um, and almost serendipitously, I was planning a vacation in Finland when um, I saw this advertisement on the English Channel Swimmers Group for the World Winter Swimming Championships in Rovaniemi, Finland. And I started to Google these pictures of people jumping into a cold water pool carved out of the ice, racing, hanging out in the hot tub together afterwards. And, you know, I thought this looks so crazy, but I really want to do it. Um, so I started training um, at Coney Island, Brighton Beach, where I live in New York City. And this is actually a photo of one of my very first um, ice swims starting kind of at just two minutes, getting back out and then building up a minute each week to get to the distance that I wanted to swim at the championships. So just to kind of take you behind the scenes um, at a few ice swimming events, um, here is a, a pool cut out of a frozen river. This is in Tumen, Siberia, um, back in 2016. Uh, looks just like a regular pool. You might see indoors or outdoors, only the water is actually just below zero degrees Celsius, uh, which is pretty wild. They actually have bubblers in the, the pool that keeps the water flowing so that it doesn't freeze over. Um, there's a lot of fanfare involved in a lot of these formal events, different flags of all the countries represented are there. And there's a lot of incredible things going on even outside the swimming. But kind of similar to a regular swim meet, you know, any age groupers that may, um, you know, have gone through that, you're kind of in the ready room, you're in chairs with your friends, everyone's nervous, excited. Here we're about to do a kilometer swim in Murmansk above the Arctic Circle in Russia. So, you know, we're smiling. Everybody looks a little bit nervous, even though we've, we're pretty experienced at that point. But again, I think the photo is kind of a, a nice thing about the camaraderie in the cold. So this is actually um, stills from a video of my first 450 meter swim um, in Tumen, Siberia. And that was actually back in 2014. You see 2016 on the sign, but that was actually advertising the world championships um, after Rovaniemi in Tumen in 2016. So again, I think I have kind of like the game face on, I've got the goggles on, but also a big winter parka. And um, next to me is actually my team in longer distances, like the 450 meters. You always have someone who's assigned to watch you, make sure you're doing okay. There's obviously rescue support on site as well. Um, but these are people that are just dedicated to you and know your personal kind of stroke style, what to look for, things like that. So... Eventually that coat comes off and the winter swimming commands, uh, as some ice swimmers or winter swimmers on the line may be familiar, the, the command is not take your mark, go. It's, um, you know, take off your clothes, get to the water and then go. So we're kind of going down the ladders here. You actually have to submerge at least one shoulder under the water before you push up the wall when the race begins. You kind of swim through. And um, again, your second is there just to help carry your towel, you know, make sure that you're um, okay, you're not going to pass out or anything after the swim. And again, just a safety measure. We shouldn't be pushing ourselves to that point, but just in case it's a great um, backdrop. And that's a great lesson to learn, no matter what level of cold water swimming you're doing, never swim alone always be with people who are who are familiar with your level of comfort and expertise in the water and just act as each other's backup. So a lot of the questions that I get is why we do it. And I think, you know, this is after my very first 450 and you can kind of see the smile and, and look of, you know, wow, I did it. We did it. This is amazing. And you also see the, we call it the ice tan, which is you get flushed, depending on your skin tone, you usually get pretty flushed and red or pink um, after. And that's just healthy. That's your body's way of dealing with the cold. And, you know, similarly shivering is really normal as well. So um, I'm about to head to to um, warm air and a warm place to kind of go and shiver it out after, after the cold.
Uh, and with winter swimming, you know, if you do it in terms of events, there's opportunities to be parts of a relay. Uh, you compete against other countries, groups of friends, and it is really so much fun. Again, I think you could kind of see the enthusiasm. This was after a long day. This is actually in the night uh, with bright lights on us, but um, such so much fun. And, you know, that feeling of camaraderie is just, you know, something I think when you get into cold water with people, you, you automatically build those friendships. So again, you may not want to travel to compete or even compete in any way but a lot of people who gather together to support each other in the cold you know just like the women's swimming events um you know it's the feeling of community which is you know just irreplaceable uh, and this is a really fun one this is at the ice swimming world championships in berghausen which is a beautiful castle in bavaria and after our race uh, you're able to enjoy the hot tub and chat with friends to warm up a little bit um, one caveat to that, um, and it's also applicable to swimming at home, if you're in a cold water for a long time, I would say more than one or two minutes, you're not going to want to go head immediately into heat. You're not want to, going to jump into a warm tub or a hot tub if you have one. You want to warm up gradually in the air at first, dry off quickly, get dressed, warm up, and then go into the hot tub later once you've rewarmed naturally. So... So lots of fun, but also kind of a good safety warning as well. So after participating in the first winter swimming championships and going through that whole experience that I just shared, um, I actually had the opportunity to go to a winter swimming festival um, for the first time. Um, actually, the Argentinian government uh, invited us down to um, swim with a glacier, swim in the wine country there. And we also did a flag swim in the city of Buenos Aires. And uh, this is me in front of the amazing classic glacier, El Calafate. Uh, one of my, you know, one of my first or second cold water swimming events was in this majestic place. So again, if it's for you or not, you know, hopefully winter swimming will bring you to something that you enjoy, even if it's just more peace in your daily life, if it's a spot of calm and, you know, the hectic day um, and seeing these things and seeing these beautiful places is just a bonus. So after participating in a lot of the winter swimming events and building up gradually to um, the 450, the one kilometer swim, and then I decided to take on a new and kind of different challenge. Um, and this is actually a picture of my first um, I, ice mile event. So it's 1,609 meters um, and it needs to be in open water and the water needs to be um, below 41 degrees or five degrees Celsius. So um, this is actually a picture of my very first ice mile in ice, Iceland. Um, and this was a great lesson just in terms of team being everything. I was a total newbie. I relied on the organizers to support us in terms of providing medical support. You see these rescue boats in the foreground. And that was a great opportunity for me to learn from. Uh, again, it was a great feeling of camaraderie with the swimmers. We actually rewarmed um, according to the local customs in Iceland where we went into the um, steam room, very hot, but we were wrapped in Icelandic wool blankets so that um, it actually kept the heat from getting in too quickly. And we actually opened the blankets up gradually to let the heat back in to rewarm um, slowly, not quickly. So after I did that, I you know, was kind of mulling around some other ideas in my head and heard about something called the Ice Sevens Challenge. And at first I wasn't too sold on it, but um, I thought I enjoyed my first ice mile. It was a great experience to travel and be with other swimmers. Why not try and take on this challenge and see? Uh, and you can kind of see this infographic if you're looking at the screen. This is a, a newspaper in Mexico City. I uh, did this little graphic. It's in Spanish, but basically it kind of talks about what happens to your body after you go into cold water. It talks about the benefits of cold water swimming. And it also details six out of seven of my journeys. Uh, we don't have uh, New Zealand on there as it's kind of on the other side. But, um, but yeah, I, I figured I'd give it a go. It wasn't like a burning thing that I had to do, but I figured I'd plan the first couple and see how I liked it. And here's a close up of the actual um, picture. This is actually me um, swimming in Antarctica, kind of stepping off some rocks that were very shallow and then the water kind of dropped off really 
uh, steeply there. So just diving in, but it looks kind of like I'm levitating a bit. So um, pretty fun. So yeah, so my first challenge of the ice sevens beyond my first ice mile in Iceland was actually back in Tumen, Siberia. I had had such a great time. It was really well supportive. And the way the, the Russian recovery style, it was really a good place to challenge myself. Um, what they do is actually after um, a long cold swim, they'll take you into a heated room. You'll put your hands and feet into cold ice water so that the um, blood doesn't flow back too quickly from your extremities. And they actually put um, hot, wet towels on you to kind of draw the cold out of your skin and rewarm you. And then once the ice water on your hands and feet feels cold, cold to you, because initially it doesn't really feel any different than your body temperature. Uh, once it feels cold, you know that you're rewarmed enough to go into the sauna. So they have an amazing process. They've do, been doing it for at least a couple decades. So it's probably the best place in the world to push yourself. Um, and this picture is actually of um, me doing the first uh, female ice mile at zero degrees. The, you can't really see it. It kind of looks like a bright sunny day, which it was. Um, but the water temperature of the, the was zero degrees, but the air was actually negative 30 um, Celsius. And that's very similar to negative 30 Fahrenheit because the way that temperature scale crosses is at negative 40. So uh, the air was so cold. You know, you can see that the water is steaming um, because the air is so much colder. So it looks warmer. Uh, but yeah, it was a great opportunity to push myself. I decided to take it just lap by lap, see how I was feeling, but I was able to complete the mile you know, kind of walk out with a smile on my face. And, you know, it was an amazing uh, experience. And since it was never done before, um, the community there really was very celebratory of it. And this is a good friend who's actually a swim organizer on Lake Baikal in Russia, kind of lifting me up. And it's really funny because he's a really big, tall man, almost seven feet tall, and just kind of being supported by the community. It was, you know, again, one of those experiences like who would, who have, has these experiences. So very thankful for that um, opportunity. So the next one, I decided to take a, a step in a little bit of a different direction. I thought about where ice miles had been done on each continent and, you know, Africa, the only ice miles on Africa, it's generally a very warm continent had been done in South Africa or in Lesotho um, in the mountains. I thought similarly, I had been to Morocco and I thought they've got skiing up there. They've got to have some cold water. So started to do some research, was working with local guides and hotels and found this amazing, gorgeous mountain lake, very shallow water. You can see it snowing uh, and the water actually, it was very windy that day. Uh, on the video, you can really hear the wind blow a geyser. And this is at the halfway point um, where I had turned around and went back out. Um, and this one was unique because there really is no tradition of winter swimming or ice miles in Morocco. So there wasn't many facilities, this whole lake, there was nothing much around. There was an abandoned hotel. So what we did was heated up the um, car, a van really hot and rewarmed and used the car like a sauna. So that was a little bit different. That was different for me as well, because it was an entirely self-planned expedition, you know, arranging local medical support myself, working with guides to make sure the water temperature would be proper at the time. And, you know, it was a successful swim and also such a, you know, I think you can tell by the water, it's very special. It's got these minerals in it that make it this beautiful tur turquoise green color. Um, so amazing. And we kind of went out and celebrated afterwards and, you know, with uh, local festivals and things like that, and just kind of following street bands down the street afterwards felt like such an amazing celebration, even though it wasn't part of a, a formal event. So, <laughs> so this is the next experience and the challenge was another different type of swim. This was a group of friends, we kind of got together, we were all ice milers and got a cabin in Norway. Um, this was the Arctic ice mile for me. One of them had to be above 70 degrees north or below 70 degrees south, kind of at the poles. Um, so these are uh, my good friends, Jared, Alice and myself. We're on the deck of the cabin that we rented right on the water. Um, and Jer is actually um, kind of the visionary behind the Ice Sevens Challenge. He thought about a swimming challenge that would be equivalent to um, the seven summits of mountaineering. So 
Um, again, it was something I was really excited to do. And um, to this date, I was the first person to do the I-7s challenge, but Jer was actually the second and the first man. So um, good times. And again, that water is the photos are just taking me back. So that's a picture of the ice mile itself. You can see our little cabin there. And one of the things that, um, you know, had piqued my initial interest in going to Rovaniemi in the first place was the opportunity to see the Northern Lights. And we kind of had chased them a few different times and never quite made it. Um, so this, in that evening after our ice miles, um, we all saw the Northern Lights and it was just amazing. We swam under them in the night and it was just such a special experience. And then I think actually just one or two days after I got back to New York from um, Tromso, Norway, I headed back up to Boston, Massachusetts, where the local team there was really kind to set up an ice mile attempt um, for me and a young Dutch swimmer, uh, Virgil, that you can see there. Uh, again, really windy day. The water wasn't too cold, um, but here we are kind of celebrating the, the ice miles after that swim. And then number six um, was actually in New Zealand in these beautiful uh, national park. This is not me starting the ice mile. This is just a fun photo with the glacier after the swim. But um, that was a really unique experience because the water was very cold. It was about three degrees Celsius, but the air temperature was like 15 degrees and sunny and warm. So uh, it was the rewarming was unique again, just because... Um, I actually just dried off and hiked out like no recovery. You know, I was kind of shivering while I was walking and, you know, going from there. So last but not least, um, one that took a tough couple tries to do is, is my South American ice mile. Um, I had the first false start when I was down in Chile to do the Strait of Magellan thought I'd take a chance and measure the temperature in a mountain lake at altitude. It was nowhere near the right temperature. So we had to go back. The so second time we got there, um, the authorities in the national park would not grant us the permit to swim at the last minute. So again, wanted to do things in the right way. So um, didn't, uh, didn't actually even step foot in the water after traveling quite a long way. Um, but finally in Argentina, again, uh, was able to do my seventh and last ice mile of the challenge. Uh, you can kind of see walking in and getting started. And again, such a beautiful place. And I think just such a perfect place to complete the challenge. So. There's just a little snapshot of the landscape here from Arik, uh, my partner and kayaker. And again, just beautiful terrain. Um, and then the unofficial finish to the, the challenge was, you know, the, the specifications of the challenge itself was that we needed to do seven ice miles and you could do either or something at the North Pole and something near the South Pole. I really wanted to make it a true seven and do swims off of all seven continents. Um, so here we are back in Antarctica. Uh, you can see the, the really uh, serious faces. That's our expedition leader and then our ship's doctor. And I'm kind of looking at the water and thinking, gosh, this is gorgeous, but it's zero degrees. You know, this water is so beautiful, but it can be deadly. I really need to think about the seriousness of this challenge because Antarctica, you can't get a weather report. You don't know where the currents are running, you know, unless you measure them on the day. So there's no intel. It's really just the leap off the boat and, you know, a trust that your body knows what to do and that the water will support you. Um, big risk, you know, my face is a little covered up, but I'm definitely very game faced and looking very nervous, which I was, but um, it paid off in such a remarkable way. And here you can see just, again, the terrain, this water was like, it's so great. It felt really fit, you know, it's just, uh, you know, was water unlike anything I had ever been in. Um, the water there is really interesting. It's actually uh, a bit similar to here in New York City because it's made up of both fresh water, which is the runoff from the glaciers and icebergs, um, but also from the, the salt water of the water there itself. So 
Um, and you can actually see in this little video, um, right at the end of the swim, this was close to my finished video for documentation purposes. You can see at my feet are just some little penguins uh, who joined me to kind of swim in my wake. And again, you can see how silvery and water beautiful the water is. So that kind of takes me back into kind of like current state and, you know, for once, you know, I'm in the kayak, I'm supporting a swimmer. So having had these journeys, something that's really important to me right now is to give back and mentor other swimmers, advise people who are just kind of starting these journeys, which, you know, maybe in a similar path, which is awesome, but maybe something completely different. You know, all that I hope is that if you do are interested in cold water swimming or pursuing swimming challenges, that you do it in a safe way and a way that benefits you. And again, that's what really appealed to me about the um, swim and women for hospice care is just that it's non-competitive, everybody's celebrating and supporting each other. Uh, and that's so important to me. So, um, so that takes me back right to my first, you know, cold water swim right there, you know, at home in New York City. Um, and I guess uh, if it's OK, I'd love to open it up to questions for, you know, any questions that you guys have for me. Thank you so much, Jamie.